the village. I don't know how you call it in your language. Uh, in Swahili, they call it uh, Koroboi. In Egosi, they call it Tekebea. You know, that, that, that thing, if you want to switch it off or you, you, you pull it off, it doesn't take an effort. You simply do, and off it goes. Such is man before God. Yes, God has allowed you to create the plane. God has allowed you to discover difficult and complicated scientific innovations. Yes, God has given you the brain to go to the moon and back. Yes, God has given you the, the, the ability to make billions of money and store it in the bank. Yes, God has made you even have the ability to live in all the comforts. But you are still man. That is what Ezekiel is conveying here. We are only but using God's intelligence. And at no point should we reach a point where we say, where we declare that we are able, where we think we can do it, where we think we can sustain ourselves. We must always and at all times depend on God. God has given us the intelligence. He has given us the ability to create. But God rules over men. But God rules over men. God is strong. God is bold. Yet like the lion is the king. As we often say, say the king of the jungle or the king of the beast. He is the lion of Judah. He is the ruler of the universe. If you add them up, the four faces. The four wings make 16 faces and 16 wings in all. Look at verse 6. You see that each of them had four faces. Each of them had four wings. That means that no matter where Ezekiel was standing, he could see all four faces. Do you get that? With each of them, with the four separate faces, wherever he was standing as they turned and as they moved, he could see all the characteristics of God's rule. Meaning, whether you are from Africa, whether you are from Asia, whether you are from Americas, whether you are from wherever, whichever side you want to stand from, you can still see exactly the hand of God as God rules his universe. You can see. That is what Ezekiel saw. We read in verse 11. Under their wings, you can't see it in the diagram that you might make in your mind had the hands of a man. In other words, speaking that these hands were ready to succumb and to comfort God's people, to help them when they needed it, or also they were there to strike judgment if necessary. Can you see? That from this ugly creature that Ezekiel saw, he also saw a hand that appeared to be the hand of man. A hand that came not only to, to, to succor or to destroy, but to comfort the people of God. But to comfort the people of God. Just like this hand has come to bring judgment, has come to bring destruction, has come to bring devastation upon the nations of the earth, the same, same hand of God that Ezekiel saw that is coming from the north to bring destruction, to bring judgment, to bring suffering is the same, same hand that Ezekiel saw brings comfort and hope to the people of God. And I want to challenge you. You can choose to be met with this hand in whichever way. You can choose that this hand meets you in judgment and destroys you or you can choose to hold this hand and you walk with it so that it becomes your strength and a place of refuge. The point is that all these descriptions point to the strong hand of God, the strong creative hand of God, the strong living hand of God. They all point to the one who is in control who controls all the events, all the affairs, all the issues of man, the hand of God. Ezekiel 
saw the hand of God. And this hand of God was over all his creation. And that is the message. That is the message. The hand of God is over all his creation. I saw in Facebook. Somebody wrote and he was reflecting, I think, saying, for a fact, God can do what he wants. It is literally like he has taken this world, put it in his hand, locked it up, and the one with the key. <laughs> Nobody knows what to do from China, from Australia, from Italy, to America, to Africa. Nobody wants to do because the owner of the world has locked the world and gone with the key. God's hand is in control. It is coming both to destroy at the same time to comfort his people. So you can choose to look at the hand of God as an avenue of destruction to you or as an, an avenue of comfort. God is still in control. We read in those verses of those cherubim that they went everyone straight forward. Everyone went straight forward. Do you know what that means? That all of them, nothing could, that, could, could turn them away. Nothing could turn them aside. They were undeviating principle of divine government. Have you got it? They were wherever. They went wherever they desired. And wherever the spirit within them told them to go. And no one could stop them. And deviating principle of divine judgment. We read that the fire that went up and down among the living creatures and the lighting and the bright amber flames, what does that speak of? It speaks of the Shekinah glory, the manifest presence of the glory of God or of Israel, that uncreated light that once abode over the mercy seat and between the cherubim in the holiest place of all in the tabernacle of the wilderness in the temple built by Solomon the very, the very glory that God said has departed from Judah has now followed the children of Israel in their captivity gone from the temple gone from Jerusalem gone from Zion but following them even by River Chebar. Let me tell you, my dear friends, we might not see, we might not meet tomorrow in the house of God like we are used to meeting. We might not be able to sing the songs and march in the choir like we have been singing, like we have been doing. God is ravaging the world with a disease that nobody is able to manage. But I want to also tell you that as the Babylonians were destroying the children of Judah and making the mockery out of them. God appeared to Jerusalem, to Ezekiel. He appeared to him in form of a light. The same light that was in Zion appeared here in captivity. The same light that was in the temple that Solomon built appeared here in captivity. Appeared to him here in captivity. Meaning, God even though he has departed from the temple, he can still walk with you individually. You can still worship God. You can still honor God. You can still live as a Christian even when you are running away from his presence. Even when you cannot be able to assemble. Even when you cannot be able to worship him like you always do. You can still worship God in your own individually. You can still do your prayers. You can still give your offering. You can see, still sing a song of praise. You can still honor God wherever you are, even though the glory of God has departed. Are you willing to be faithful and worship God wherever you are? That is the question. That is the question. My dear brothers and sisters, a day is coming. A day is coming, and this is just a precursor. This is just a kionjo. Whatever we are seeing here, there is nothing. A day is coming when we all must run from the comfort of our homes. When we all must run from the comfort of our towns. When we all must learn, run from the comfort of our works and jobs. And we will run. We will leave our money behind. We will leave our properties behind. We will leave our lands behind. Only those who are faithful 
will be able to stand. Only those who read will be able to stand. May this situation that we are facing now be able to teach us that wherever we will be, God will still remain faithful. He will take care of us. He will provide for us. He will do his thing because he is God. I want us to go to verse 15 through 21. We also see the wheels. We see the wheels. The wheels are constantly turning. And it necessitates that if they are turning and all the animals can go in one direction or another, the living creatures, because they are faced in all four directions, they could move anywhere without changing. But the team tells us that those wheels were full of eyes. So, you have the rule of God over all creation. You have the wheels of God wheeling and moving, doing His will wherever they wish, all over the direction of the earth. But you also have the hand of God to bring judgment and save. But you also have the eyes of God. Then you also have the eyes of God. You also have the wheels. These wheels are full of eyes. If they move this direction, they are full of eyes. If they move that direction, they are full of eyes. If they move this direction, they are full of eyes. If they move this direction, they are full of eyes. What is Ezekiel seeing? Ezekiel is seeing God's omniscience. A God who rules his creation, a God who never changes in any way, and a God who sees in every place, beholding every evil and every good. God who sees in every place, beholding every evil and every good. I don't know if you are getting what I want to try to say. Ezekiel is telling us that God is constantly moving. God is constantly working. God is a powerful God. He is a glorious God. He is present in all places. He can see all things. He can see all things. You know, Friends, we have secrets. We have secrets in our phones. We have secrets in our hearts. We have secrets that we have shared only with one person. We have talked with only one person. And some we have, we have kept them in our hearts. But there is a God who can see in all places. He can see both the good things and both the bad things things. And so, during this time, excuse me, when the world is ravaging in this sickness called coronavirus, when God has closed his world and gone with the key, I want you to realize that he sees each and every one of us. He sees our sins, he sees our weaknesses, he sees our challenges, he sees, he, he sees everything. He can be able to see he can be able to see your dirty talk. He can be able to see your dirty life. He can be able to see my dirty talk, my dirty life. God is able to see, but he can also be able to see your suffering and your need for help. During this time, my dear brothers and sisters, when supplies are lacking, when sickness is ravaging, when death is staring in the eyes of many of God's children, I want to encourage you that God is seeing our pain. God is seeing our trouble. God is seeing our challenge. And he is promising to come. And to Ezekiel, God is telling Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I am still in control. I am God and I am still in control. Verse 22 to 27, so you know we are about to finish. We see the firmament. This is a platform that contains the throne of God. 
In other words, God is still on the throne. Ezekiel, you are in Babylon. You are by the river Sheba. You know that the glory of God has departed. But listen, God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. God is still on the throne. His will is still being accomplished in this world. Even if you don't see it as they kill, God is still in the throne. Among the chaos you are seeing, God is still on the throne. Among the sicknesses you are seeing, God is still on the throne. Among the deaths you are seeing, God is still on the throne. Ezekiel, you might not be able to see what God is trying to accomplish, but God is still on the throne. The complex movement of the cherubim and the wheels reveal how intricate God's providence is in his universe. In other words, only he can understand it. Only he can control it. But the message is, there is a perfect harmony. There is a perfect order in everything that God does, even in the midst of apparent chaos. In verse 26 and 27, you see an amber throne in Azor blue. You see a sapphire saddle, the throne flashing like a diamond in color, like a rainbow. You see a light that binds the obscures. In verse 28, it is described as the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. He saw a vision of the glory of the Lord. That firmament there, a dome covering the whole of the living creatures. In other words, God's divine government was all over his creatures. So the vision that Ezekiel was brought and was shown by God is that God is sitting on his throne, God is watching all his creatures, God is in touch of all his creation, God is in control. He is still in the throne. Of course, verse 26, if you look at it critically, it shows you one who is in the likeness of a man. Who is this man? If you ask Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it will, it will tell you that the great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in flesh. God was manifest in man. So in other words, even in the book of Ezekiel, the gospel truth is also shown there. Christ-centered. Christ is shown as the one sitting on the throne. He is the one who is coming not only to bring salvation, but to rule his people. But verse 28 is the last verse that I want to leave with you of Ezekiel. But let me read it. Let me read the beauty of verse 28 of Ezekiel chapter 1. Like the appearance of a rainbow, in a cloud of a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, if you remember in the book of Genesis, you read that Noah was the rainbow, saw the rainbow after the storm. Noah saw the rainbow after the storm. In the book of Revelation, you see John the Apostle he sees a rainbow around the throne. He saw it before the storm. But here, the prophet Ezekiel sees the rainbow within the storm. And God is showing that his glory is at work in the world. He is judging the sins of his people. He is keeping his covenant. The rainbow is a depiction that God will keep his covenant to the faithful. I wanted to hear a big amen from you because of that powerful God. Why? God will keep his covenant. Yet he will keep a remnant in the midst of his judgment. Not everybody will be destroyed. Children of God. Not everybody will die. God will keep his covenant. God will keep a remnant. 
and the, the rainbow, Ezekiel is seeing is a hope that what God has promised, what God has said, he will do. If he has said he will heal, he will do. If he has said he will save, he will save. If he has said he will rescue, he will rescue. God will keep, will be faithful to his covenant. God will be faithful to his covenant. Now the word of our God shall stand forever. He will not break his covenant. And what comes out of his lips he will keep. Isn't that wonderful? That what God has promised, what God has promised, my dear brothers and sisters, whether you perish in death, whether you, you, you waste in sickness, whether you suffer and you have no hope whatsoever of you having uh, uh, ever been able to be seen by anybody, by your family, by your relatives, nobody will be able to come and bury you or cry over your COVID. But God has promised he will still keep his covenant. What he has said that he is coming to save his children, he will surely come. What he has said that he will take us to heaven, he will surely accomplish. What he has said that he will ensure that we accomplish the gospel and, and tell the whole the world about his goodness, that he will do. God will keep his word. God will keep his covenant. It's really wonderful to have your eyes lifted heavenward, northward to see God's plan to see that no matter what is happening to you in your life and in your circumstances God is in absolute control and that he will keep his covenant before his people so what is the lesson what are we learning from all this Ezekiel sees the vision and it becomes clear to him yes they have been cut off from Jerusalem. They have been cut off from the temple. They have been cut off from the visible sense of the Shekinah glory of God. But they cannot be cut off from God forever. They cannot be cut off from God forever. In other words, the good news is, yes, challenges come. Yes, pain has come. Yes, sickness has come. Yes, coronavirus is here. But it will not rule forever. The hand of God is coming and salvation is coming. That is the promise. That is the promise Ezekiel was told. That even though I bring my judgment, I am also coming to bring salvation. Judgment will not rule forever. Suffering will not continue forever. I am coming to rescue you. Hallelujah, God's people. God is coming. We not just made for this. God is coming. That is why Paul said, I am persuaded. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, no prosperities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no death, no any other creature shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God's people. From God. He has given us a covenant. He has given us a promise. He will keep it. But you know, we must all say that God's judgment cannot be avoided. You know, the rainbow speaks of the mercy of God. But you know, people think that because they see a rainbow, it is well. Understand that in the rainbow, before the rainbow, there was rain. Heavy rain that destroyed. Heavy rain that killed. Heavy rain that ravaged the earth. In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, the only way to see the rainbow and remain in the rainbow in the covenant of God is for you to understand that if you don't repent your sins, there is judgment. There is judgment for sure. And it is important for you and I to run to the presence of God 
so that we can be we can be saved. Finally, the blessings of God cannot be taken for granted. There was a time the children of Israel used to worship in Jerusalem, but now they are worshiping by the river Babylon and by the river Keba. There was a time they could sing and march and glorify. There was a time when things were nice, but a time has come when they must be separated from their loved ones and stay in Babylon in captivity for over seven years. The blessings of God cannot be taken for granted. The fact that you are enjoying life now, don't take that for granted. The fact that you can worship God today, don't take that for granted. The fact that you can be able to kneel down and pray, don't take that for granted. The fact that you can sing a song, don't take that for granted. The fact that you can be able to give your offerings, don't take that for granted. A time is coming when all that is not possible. And while you have breath, while you have breath, and you are able to, to, to do it. Do it for God's glory. May God bless you. May God bless you as you think of this one. Before you play that song, I want to sing this song. I want to sing this song here. Tunaishi wakati wakuagana wakuagana Tunaishi wakati wakuagana wakuagana Kazi tutafanya kwa machozi Tukinwea kikombe cha bwana Kazi tutafanya kwa machozi Tukinwea kikombe cha bwana O mali himekuwa ni milima mikubwa Niliwaona wengine wakili ya machozi Laiti tungetoa mali yetu kwa bwana Tazama sasa ni milima kutubonda bonda O mali himekuwa imami kubwa Niliwaona wengine wakili ya machozi Laiti tungetoa mali yetu kwa bwana tazama sasa ni milima kutubonda bonda onyokula mwisho limetolewa limetolewa onyokula mwisho limetolewa limetolewa kila mti usiozaa matunda Shokali mesha we kwa shinani Kila mti uzioza matunda Shokali mesha we kwa shinani O mali himekuwa ni milima mikubwa Niliwaona wengine wakili ya machozi Laiti tungetoa mali yetu kwa bwana tazama sasa ni milima kutubonda bonda o mali uani milima mikubwa niliwaona wengine wakili ya machozi laiti tungetoa mali yetu kwa bwana Tazama sasa ni milima kutu bonda bonda. Let me say this in finishing. You know, if you, you, you go to... If you